cold, every pain, every tooth, every gum, every flinch, every worry, every flu, every ache, every age, every breath. Cold, every pain, every treatment, every gum, every flinch, every learning, every worry, every accreditation, every flu, every clench, every ache, every gargle, every age, every tear. Every, every breath, smile, every day, cold, every pain, every week, every week, every, every month, every gun, you every show week, up. It's every what you do, every worry, every education, every food, and add a every every garden, every age, every year, every year. with proven every products smile, and professional development. Every day, every for every health pain, with humanity, every month, every month, you show up. It's what you learn to do. Every worry, every day, every food, and every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Every patient, every question, every cold, every pain, every health, every humanity, every gun, every mind, every flesh, every worry. with you as a partner with proven products and professional development halion for health with humanity right good evening to everyone Welcome, welcome to the participants. Uh, this is a yet another SADA webinar where we are going to be celebrating World Oral Health Day. Um, we know World Oral Health Day is a, is a beautiful day that we've come as dentists, as dental professions to empower the, 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 the masses about, you know, dent, to the dental knowledge, and all, but also just reducing the oral health burden. Um, just by using our resources, as we know, with SADA, we are people who are hosting CPD evenings. We host um, panel uh, webinars, as we know. Last year, we've hosted uh, several webinars in order to basically empower people with the knowledge that we know. Um, today, we will have uh, Ms. Marcel Erasmus from Halion uh, to speak a bit more about uh, World Oral Health Day and just touch on a few of the bases. And we'll also have uh, Ms. Christine de Sosa as our guest speaker. Speaking to you today is Dr. Kuhn Jotini. I am hailing all the way from the Eastern Cape. I am part of the South African Dental Association and also part of the Young Dentist uh, Council. I have been under SADA for about two years now and I can definitely say I love the impact that we are making um, in, 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 in South Africa in general when it comes to, to oral health. Um, so with furthermore, I'm going to just pass it on to Ms. Marcel uh, and then we can just pass on to our guest speaker afterwards. Right, Ms. Marcel, you can take the stage. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction and thank you for inviting um, Haley on to this evening. We are very proud to be part of the World Oral Health Day. And this evening, I'm going to share in short some initiatives and projects, as well as what Halion does behind the scene to support you to make mouths happy. So I was asked a question earlier, um, and uh, who's Halion? So Halion is actually previously known as GSK Consumer Healthcare. Most of you will know that, um, some of you won't, it's still very new, but we are now a standalone organization, Sensodyne and Paradontex, um, two of our biggest brands that you as healthcare professionals will know quite well. Um, so yeah, that is that is Halion, if some of you don't know who Halion was. Um, Halion as a global partner of FDI's World Oral Health Day is, is a partner of choice for second year running. 
we're very proud to continue working with the FDI to support dental professionals and keep you in the spotlight. The FDI represents the voice of dental professionals all around the world, and they share our commitment and achieve, to achieve better everyday oral health for everyone. This making FDI and you as our dental professionals important partners for Helion. Beyond our category leading oral health brands, we do strive to support you with programs, initiatives, events, and this happens around the globe. Um, it's not just in certain um, parts of the, uh, the world, but really globally, we're trying to reach as many healthcare professionals and patients. Our ongoing partnership with the FDI grants us the privilege of supporting some amazing projects, which does just that. Some of the projects that I can share with you this evening is the Partially Dentite Patients Project. This project aims to empower practitioners to understand and support the specific needs of patients who are partially dentite and improve the outcomes of pa these patients by providing dental health care professionals and patients the appropriate tools and the increased global awareness about the treatment of uh, options available out there. We're looking at toothbrush guidelines. It's a very important piece that we want to drive with our healthcare professionals and obviously with consumers. Um, this to provide consensus on toothbrushing recommendations, offering, offering practical guidelines um, on individual level um, preventative, um, preventative strategies. And then lastly, we have an oral health observatory. What does this mean? We collect standardized oral health data on a global level. We evaluate the oral health needs of patients and dental practitioners um, to optimize service provision and use the data to identify oral health trends and influence policymakers to really invest in oral disease to improve oral health outcomes. And these initiatives have, have supported both dentists and patients together. This to provide insights and actions which can support better oral health worldwide. A happy mouth after all is a happy patient. Um, then locally for World Oral Health Day, um, Haleon will have a mobile dental clinic um, which will be stationed at the Woodmead Retail Mall offering valuable services to the public to ensure those who does visit the clinic is in optimal um, oral health condition. And then there will also be chill tests. So any stores that you visit, look out for the chill tests um, at selected stores, um, as well as we will also be partnering with the dental schools on outreach programs. Then on the 20th, which is tomorrow evening, um, lastly, um, a mouthful of stuff that we're busy doing and we're together with FDI, but also local initiatives. We have the Middle East Africa World Oral Health Day webinar taking place tomorrow evening. So please go and register if you haven't registered as yet. Um, go register on the Halion Health Partner. Um, if you miss it, there will be um, an available on-demand um, um, recording available. So go register so that you get that reminder and that link. So from my side, from Halion, we want to thank, say thank you for always putting your patients oral health first. And together we celebrate World Oral Health Day and healthy mouths. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Marcel, for that. Uh, it looks like you guys have a jam-packed program um, of which you guys are going to be conducting throughout the week. Um, just a few notices to the participants. Uh, please refrain from raising your hand throughout the lecture. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the session. Um, so please, if you do have any questions, just type it out in the Q&A uh, chat session. Um, but also secondly, the CPD uh, points will definitely be loaded um, within due time. So do not panic. Your CPD uh, points will be loaded uh, within due time. Um, and just please also complete the evaluation at the end of the webinar. We always need an improvement of some, um, of some sorts. Uh, without going and uh, diverting too much, today we have Ms. Christine de Sousa. This is our guest speaker today who will be speaking. Ms. Christine de Sousa is a qualified oral hygienist with a special interest um, with the connection between oral health and periodontal disease on a broader health uh, on broader health issues. Her love for oral health was sparkled when she was working as a dental assistant in Dubai, UAA. Uh, after which she was then she went and qualified at the Wits University. 
Um, Ms. Christine's unique approach to oral health has seen her featured on uh, television with Michael Moe and is regularly invited to speak on this topic at the dental uh, conferences. Currently, Ms. Christine invests her time um, focusing on oral health in the elderly. Through her work uh, with the aged, she has made a remarkable impact on the health of her patients, such as a uh, reduced UTI infections, uh, lowering the dependency on antibiotic treatment. So, Mr. Sosa, um, just obviously outlining your lecture, she will be covering just uh, periodontitis and gingivitis um, on infectious, uh, as, as infectious diseases, um, and it will be characterizing basically how it destructs the oral cavities. The name of the lecture, as we know, will be the synergistic link between oral health and systemic uh, health as well. Uh, Mr. Sosa, please just take the stage um, and, and just introduce yourself also if you have anything more to say and you can go on with your lecture. Thank you, Dr. Q. Thank you very much for that. Um, I'm going to first start with, um, obviously, um, as mentioned before, um, I have over 30 years of experience in dentistry. And um, before I start, I would really like to thank all the sponsors and organizers for arranging this wonderful opportunity um, for us as professionals to share our knowledge and ideas for the greater good and for the world oral health to really facilitate healing for all. Just my disclaimer before I start, I hereby declare that I have no financial interest or financial relationship or conflicts of interest to disclose regarding the subject matter discussed in this presentation. Any trade names of products used in this presentation are merely products that are readily available in South Africa. I affirm that I have not received any financial support, sponsorship, or compensation from any industry source related to the content of my presentation. The patient photograph and video disclaimer, these individuals depicted in the photographs used in this presentation have provided their informed and voluntary consent for use in this presentation. I respect and uphold the principles of patient privacy and confidentiality. These photographs and videos are used solely for the purpose of education and illustrative purposes to enhance the understanding of medical procedures, conditions, and treatments. The patient's names have been changed or crossed out. And I do have all the files with me. So we're going to now start with um, my talk. And it is the synergistic link between um, oral health and um, the, the body. And um, the reason I chose that topic was because um, I felt that people don't always connect the mouth with the gut and the rest of the body. So therefore, I'll get it now for you. Uh, therefore, I felt that um, by linking up and showing patients, every single patient that I start working with, um, to show them how the mouth connects to the body and the overall health, then patients realize okay, my mouth is not separate to my body. My mouth is part of the digestive tract. And by looking after the mouth, we can also look after the gut. So when we start, how the mouth talks to the body. Now, when you look at a picture like this, and we're just going to go through a few things just to start talking on layman terms again. When I see a mouth like this, I get very excited and um, I know that when I see this, we can do a lot of healing and we can see what's actually part of this person and what's going on in the mouth and the gut. So you can see the linear gingivitis, you can see the redness, the swelling, you can see the plaque. This is inflammation. If this is happening in the mouth, I can guarantee you it's happening in the body as well. So what is plaque? Plaque is the bacteria in your mouth, the food you eat and your saliva. So in layman terms, the bacteria kind of eat food, they drink a spit. What comes out of the bacteria's body is the plaque. And that 
can do two things. Um, the first thing it can do is harden into calculus. And there you can see on the lingual area, because of the saliva duct opening, it always collects on the linguals or the upper buccal mucosa between the sixes. That stain over there is obviously your smoking stain and all of this needs to be removed. You can see the inflammation there. Every single patient I see, because I'm an oral hygienist, I always disclose their mouths. So the pink would be, I explain to them a new plaque, the purple an older plaque, and if there's blue, a fungus, which I'll show you later. So by patients looking physically with a mirror and seeing the plaque, this is where it's a wonderful opportunity to introduce the different types of floss that would suit this mouth, into dental brushes, how you would be brushing, showing the patient from tooth to tooth to actually show them where and what is growing at that area. Also to take the minute or two in your time before you see a patient to show them what can clock actually do. We know that it can cause caries on the whole circumference of the tooth, depends on individual to individual. And then it can also cause the gums to become red and swollen, bleed easily when brushing and bad breath. By just explaining to the patients, then they might have gingivitis. Um, I always use the word gingivitis and say itis, like tonsillitis, this is in forms of inflammation. Once the, the inflammation starts in the gums, it can actually spread to the gums, bone, and ligaments, where this disease is slow and painless, and if not treated from gingivitis, will then progress to periodontitis, which we all know. Your different stages of periodontitis, we've seen that as well. It's always good to show the patient how you start with a clean mouth, then the white blood cells, the inflammatory responses, the calculus, and then the downgrowth of the bone, and how these bacteria can travel and enter an artery vein and nerve or travel between the epithelium, and then eventually we get this long in the tooth. Um, and I've seen, funny enough, long in the tooth with a 21-year-old. So it doesn't, it's not really an age thing, long in the tooth. So this is a case that I'm busy with now, and I'll probably talk about this towards the end of the year. It was the most difficult perio case I've ever dealt with. And now with the tick from the periodontist, we are now going into orthodontics. Another thing that can happen in the mouth is sensitive teeth, which is always important to explain in layman terms to the patients. And what are the main causes? We always say it's incorrect brushing and showing patients this horizontal swoop on the gum line where the gum recedes upwards at the top and recedes downwards at the bottom. Or they can get periodontal disease where I've showed you that long in the tooth that would be sensitive to hot, cold and sweet things. And the big one now that we find in is grinding and clenching. We do know the treatment for this is obviously a topical fluoride, sealant protect, or I have found now birch tree xylitol can also help with that. We also see your attrition, where you're grinding top tooth, grinding the uh, bottom teeth, where eventually I always say to patients, when you're grinding like this, then the teeth will grind down and become flat like table mountain. When I say the word table mountain, then immediately they realize, goodness, yeah, we don't want to continue with that. And then we obviously introduce in our practice by plates. There you can see a fraction from also the grinding and the buckling, and then um, acid erosion, and then toothbrush abrasion. Um, in my practice, because predominantly I am mobile and I go into a lot of retirement homes, I find that the electric toothbrushes work very well with the carers that look after patients with dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, it's much easier than with a manual toothbrush with a bigger one. So that's my personal preference. Um, I know that um, some people like Sonic and some people just like manual toothbrushes. But I find where I work, it works very, very well. Then also with the toothbrush, I prefer the sensitive heads. And we have also found that 93% um, of patients using the pressure sensor uh, have reduced their overaggressive brushing by um, in one month. I've also found that every patient that I see, I always make models before they come in to my practice. And if there is areas where 
the gums have receded on like let's say the 3141 like here i recommend a soft toothbrush to brush up in strokes of about you know one to ten and i've seen by showing the models of before and after how the gums have really grown by about two three millimeters i did have a patient that had completely grew back as well now, when we come to the sensitivity, it's also important to explain to patients how, um, when they grind their teeth, um, what will happen and why they get headaches and tension in the jaw and neck pain. So you can actually see there is a nerve bundle over there. And when the condyle and um, the temporal bone start to press against those three nerves, then people start having symptoms, which can be prevented by not having to give chronic medication, by just making a bite plate that is suitable either for the upper or lower jaw, which will be dependent on what the dentist decides. So I'm just going to go through here. Every single patient that I see, I do give a copy of this to because you never know who they will tell at work to um, when somebody keeps saying, oh, they're very sensitive to light, then they remember what I've said in, in this piece of paper. And then that's how word spreads. And you can prevent the grinding and these symptoms by just making them aware of it. So obviously head pain, headache, you can get the attention of the forehead, the temporal, the migraine type, the sinus type, shooting pain at the back of the head, hair and scalp. So, you know, some people will say that just touching the scalp will be sensitive. Then your eyes, um, pain behind the eyes, bloodshot eyes when they wake up, eyes may bulge out slightly, sensitive to light. Mouth, you'll have discomfort, limiting opening of the mouth, inability to open up smoothly. Jaw often deviates to the side where um, upon opening, locks, shut or opens and can't find bite. The teeth clench and grinding at night, you'll hear a patient saying, my husband grinds terribly at night, um, localized or generalized soreness of teeth, thermal sensitivity, that's where the sensitivity comes to hot, cold and sweet. And I find once we've given them a bite plate and given them some mousse, then obviously that all goes away. Your abfraction to the gingival thirds, your localized and generalized wear facets, which we saw with attrition. And a fraction. Yeah, problems. Funny enough, this I've seen a lot during post COVID, how many people are being stressed and they've needed bite plates. I've never made in our practice as many bite plates as I've made in the last three years, ever in 30 years of dentistry, what I've seen in dentistry. Obviously, with the ear problems, you'll have the hissing, decreased hearing, ear pain, ear ache with no infection clogged or itchy ears, and then they want to take an earbud and scratch in the ears in the morning, vertigo, dizziness, and tinnitus. Your jaw problems, we know which makes the grounding, grating sounds and your pain and your clicking. And then, of course, the neck, the lack of mobility and stiffness, tiredness, sore muscles, shoulder aches, especially in that, those corners there. And then funny enough, the arm and finger numbness and or pain. The throat uh, funny enough, I had a patient that did say that her voice has a bit of an irregularity. It made sense to her. And feeling of something foreign object in the throat constantly. Uh, frequent coughing or constantly clearing of the throat as well. So, yeah, you can see this is a patient that sleeps predominantly on her left-hand side. And as she's sleeping, she's chewing the cheeks. And there you can also see how she chews the lip. There you can clearly see that the table mountain where the teeth are grinding down. And there from the front are those teeth actually bite the lip as well. And then those lines over there are found when they start using a bite plate and mousse, it really helps with that. Now going on to systemic diseases related to periodontal plaque. My journey started around about 2009 where I was very interested in oral bacteria and what they're doing on the body. And uh, I remember going to Cape Town to the International Federation of Dental Hygiene in 2013. And uh, Professor Robin Seymour was there and he explained that 
how systemic diseases can cause, from the mouth, can cause cardiovascular disease, diabetes, preterm birth, chronic pulmonary obstructive, osteoporosis, renal function, organ rejection, depression, erectile dysfunction, Alzheimer's disease, pancreatic and kidney cancers, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and head and neck cancer. Now we know there is so much more, which I'll show you later. And I like to show this to patients where these bacteria go through. So always say, how how is it that these oral bacteria can cause that? Just to show a patient how they can travel through the gums or down into the artery vein and nerve. So I'm going to now introduce you to a video um, and just a little bit of background to this. Um, when I turned 40, I went to Corsica with uh, my best friend and his best friend was a cardiologist. And, um, you know, we had two weeks of chatting and I would pick his brain about the heart and explain to him about these oral bacteria. And it was wonderful. And we decided to not work in silos and um, make a disciplinary of group of doctors that we would communicate with each other and um, help each other. And obviously he was fascinated with how the oral bacteria affect the body. And I would go into theater with him and we would do with pathologists and endocrinologists and his wife's a gynecologist. So we are a multidisciplinary team that work together. And this video I'm going to show you is how we linking up everything from from stress to the body and mindfulness. And then I will show you how I've applied it in my practice with genetics. Did you know that all chronic diseases stem from some form of inflammation? If we can prevent and control the inflammation, we can prevent and control the disease. Let's start at the very beginning. Since the dawn of time, there has been a very close relationship between our genes and our environment. The interplay between them determines our well-being. At any point, environmental factors may activate switches in our DNA called epigenes, which can trigger illness in the body. Everything, from the air we breathe, to what we eat, the joys we celebrate, and the traumas we experience, have a significant impact on eliciting responses in our genes, in either a positive or a negative way. One of the major consequences of being exposed to long-term environmental stress is chronic, low-grade inflammation. How does this all work? Well, Inflammation is the body's natural response to injury. The body's way of signaling the immune system to heal and repair damaged tissue and to defend itself against foreign invaders such as viruses and bacteria. There are two types of inflammation, acute and chronic. Acute inflammation is a good form of inflammation that is designed to save our lives. Like a bee sting, for example. Our body's defense mechanism localizes the poison allowing our immune system to heal us. When we're exposed to chronic emotional stress, nutritionally deficient diets, smoking, or any chronic illness, we develop inflammation over long periods of time. This is called chronic low-grade inflammation. In essence, when the healing response becomes chronic over a long period of time, that which initially tries to heal us ultimately causes the dis-ease. The truth? Inflammation does not discriminate. It can affect everyone. That's why we have developed the CardioLife Anti-Inflammatory Lifestyle Program, an innovative multifaceted approach to preventing and healing chronic low-grade inflammation through diet, physical exercise, mindfulness, sleep hygiene, and home monitoring of chronic diseases. All designed with one aim in mind, to keep you balanced and ensure you're always one step ahead of your health.
Okay. So after that, now what I do at my practice is I will look at what we call interleukin-1, which is a genetic. I'm going to explain that to you in detail. And then I take these little paper points over here and I stick it into localized areas in between the teeth, um, especially perio pockets, to find out which type of bacteria are living in there. And then the last thing that I also do is I swallow the tongue to get a whole picture um, on a microscopic level of what I'm dealing with. And then every single patient will get a um, piece of paper like this. And we'll look at four different types of interleukin, which I'll explain to you now, and how we can synthesize or um, boost the immune system. Then we'll look at the oral bacteria and the different types. And then we'll look at candida or your pathogens that live in the gut. And then we'll look at diet. Bearing in mind, we're a multidisciplinary team. So we work, obviously, with dietitians and um, uh, uh, geneticists that can go even deeper into finding out um, what diet you can use for your specific um, DNA, um, your mind, um, your overall well-being. There is so many tests available now. So we just slot it into this pie as we go so that the patient can get a very, very good idea of who they are as an individual and give them that tool to make the changes for their wellness and well-being. On this side here is the stress, which is out of my scope of practice. This is where we refer, obviously, to your, your psychologists, your social workers, um, and even kinesiologists. Some people are very holistic. Uh, body talk therapist to help with stress. You can see it's a very big part of that. And just to understand how stress works, where we um, have our kidneys, and on top of our kidneys sit the adrenal glands. And every single time, let's say, for example, somebody gets a fright, you drive in the car, and a car swerves in front of you, you get a fright, and you go to work, and you under stress to get to that deadline. That's spiking your adrenaline all the time. And when, like a car that can run empty on petrol, the body almost starts running empty and the other side of the kidneys, adrenal glands release cortisol. And that cortisol is the one that we believe switches all of these on. If you've got all these bacteria in your mouth and all these funguses in your gut and depending on your genetic constellation, and if you're eating poorly, because bearing in mind, let's say, for example, with your seven areas of your life, like family, let's say, for example, people have a death in their family, that will affect them. What do they then do? They might eat more. They might take to alcohol. They just don't feel well. That will, in turn, increase the pathogen, increase the mouth bacteria, because now they don't feel like brushing, and then that will affect whatever epigenics they have as well. Finances, maybe they lose their job. Mental, maybe they suffer from depression. Vocational, maybe they're not happy in their jobs. Um, and spiritually, uh, maybe they've lost their faith with God and they don't have peace of mind. And then socially, leisure time, are they actually... Um, finding things that give them joy are they doing hobbies that they enjoy um, and physical maybe they don't really exercise so that all affects them you know we can speak about so many and each patient is unique when we make an appointment and go through this and helps them understand themselves better as well so interleukin one your genes is not your destiny, I always say, because um, if you do the right things, you'll be healthy and you can live a old life. I have a patient that um, her genetic is one of the weakest genetics and she's 92. So it does, doesn't determine that your body, you always get ill. So what we measure is interleukin-1 and interleukin-1 
is a group of 11 cytokines that plays a central role in the regulation of your immune and inflammatory responses to sterile insults. Um, a protein produced by various cells, your macrophages, your mast cells, your granuloma, your lymphocytes. These all take instructions from the cytokines. When we look at a particular patient, we have four types. So you'll have a green, which is like a robot. What do we do when we come to a green robot? It's good to go. These people are normally very, very strong. If they get sick, they recover very quickly. In the mouths, for example, you'll see these are the patients that don't really get many cavities. Um, if you're a bee, like I'm a bee, um, we've got to be careful. You know, you you can't just not floss or brush for too long because then you will have um, problems developing in your mouth. And then your C's and D's are the ones where they the ones that they can sometimes brush and then they neglect it slightly and you'll immediately see a cavity that's newly starting. Um, I've learned the hard way because my daughter's a D. So um, I've had to keep an eye on, on her a lot. So what do we do when we take all of that, the reds and the orange, and we want to synthesize or make them in A? We increase and enhance the immune system. So your immune enhancers, are obviously, they smoke, um, and they're willing to go through smoking cessation. We go through that with them. The reducing of stress, like I said, we refer out. Diet rich in vitamin C, folic acid, and omegas are immune boosters, especially also for the gut. Um, probiotics, I'm not very, I don't always recommend probiotics for long term, but for about four months, we'll put them on a probiotic. Your curcumin, which is very good, like your turmeric, synthesizes your interleukin 6, so it can make you an A. And then your balanced glucose, reducing the sugar intake and then exercise. We've now added NAC, your N-acetylcysteine, and your zeolites, which is a heavy metal detoxifier, which takes out heavy metals in your body. So now we're going to just show you a patient. And I've started with the C because the Cs are very similar to the Ds, okay, um, to show you how a C can actually heal. This patient that came to me was a school teacher. Um, she didn't have money for an implant. And um, the doctor that I was working with at the time said to me, do you think you can try and save the tooth? And I said, I don't know if I can, but I will try. And I made that very clear with the patient. And she was going to work with me and be compliant. So this is what, we, um, what I had to deal with with her. As you can see, the 3-6 was advanced period. This people would have taken, the dentist would have taken it out. She didn't want to. So there you can actually see how close it is. I'm just going to go back there. Please notice this 3-7 distal area is very healthy. These areas we also treated, but she came for this particular problem. So I knew flossing and interdental brushes weren't going to do the trick. So at that time, and we're talking here, um, 2009 or 2010, I said to her we could use a chlorhexidine base, and I gave her a syringe like this and with a blue top, and I said every single night she had to inject into that pocket very carefully. Um, which she did do. She didn't squirt it all the way down, but we managed to flush out whatever she was having that day with food. And to our surprise, it started to close up. And this was after about four or five months. And I said, well, it's working. Let's keep going. And then I decided I wanted to actually see what bacteria were in there. And that's when I really started looking at different oral bacteria. Please notice again, there's nothing wrong with that area. These ones started to slowly recover. There you can see it's closing in now. And then these were the bacteria that she had. So to go into explaining to the light blue and dark blue is streptococcus. And then these bacteria that climb in 
the scaffolding, if you like, um, is your PGTFTD. I will go into detail with those just now. But when these bacteria cross this line, then patients have symptoms not only physically on the medical history form of high blood pressure, but also the aggressive periodontitis in the mouth as well. So once we knew what we were dealing with, then they recommended your metronidazole and we gave her an antibiotic at the time. Now I don't really use antibiotics anymore. And then this is what came out. It started to heal beautifully. This area was still a bit vulnerable, but she was happy. She was comfortable. And I was happy. And then my dentist took the occlusion off to make the bite comfortable. But I'll never forget when we took this OPG and we looked at it. Um, I remember focusing on the three sex and my dentist said, oh, my goodness, look at that one. And I got the fright of my life because I thought, how on earth did this happen? And they actually, the bacteria, I think, packed up shop and thought, well, we're cleaning all these areas and we're neglecting them. And they went and attacked the distal part. And they were very, very aggressive. So again, I'm back to the drawing board. And we found it was a Porphyrmoranus gingivalis and Tanarella facipia. And um, we again gave an antibiotic. That was the last time we did. And it started to heal. And this was in an interleukin C, where patients have what we call a cytokine storm, but they don't have the full ability to fight inflammation. It goes unnoticed very slowly, and then suddenly you'll have a gum flare up. And that can apply anywhere systemically in their bodies as well, because the doctors use interleukin 1 to interpret uh, problems in the gut, um, patients with knee operations. It's incredible to have insight into a patient when you understand their DNA and their genetics. So the AA, these are the bacteria that can form chronic periodontitis, risk of implant failure, esophageal cancers, liver, which is your non-alcoholic fatty livers, um, diabetic renal failure, your hyperglycemia, your venous thrombosis, your fetal loss, which I'll discuss later on a patient as well, uh, preterm birth, pancreatic cancer, breast cancer, vascular disease, and risk of uh, stroke. As long as you have the smoking, they smoke or their diet is rich in refined carbohydrates and sugars and um, they just don't eat healthy, it will impact them as well. And then, of course, stress. Then, obviously, your um, Tanarella, you will also have risk of dementia and stroke, Alzheimer's disease, peripheral vascular disease, um, obviously affects the teeth, the reproductive again, and the heart, uh, joint and musculoskeletal health, and again, upper gastrointestinal tract and the cancers of the colon. With this one, we also will have parts of cancer of the throat, strongly linked up. Yeah, it will go with the heart, your arteriosclerosis, coronary vascular, lung cancer, cancers of the stomach. Um, yeah, you get your erectile dysfunctions, your low birth weight, your preterm birth weight. Yeah, we'll also have more for the reproductive, large intestine, cirrhosis of the liver. Um, yeah, they found that tenere, this, this one found in the hippocampus of the frontal cortex and Alzheimer's and dementia and stroke. Again, lymph and interesting, the HPV. Then obviously here again, we've got the heart, a brain with strokes, myocardial infarction, and stillborn neonatal sepsis and preeclampsia. Again, with the teeth, your cerebral aneurysm, Alzheimer's, respiratory, because they can also aspirate these bacteria in, um, and your inflammatory bowel disease and your appendicitis, and venous thrombosis. The list goes on and on. And it's all there. I can send 
everybody a whole list and documented research to back this up. Joint and musculoskeletal rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis, again, venous thrombosis and your fetal loss. And then your Alzheimer's again, arteriosclerosis, aggressive periodontitis. Now, interesting, when you see a picture like this, you'll automatically think to yourself, um, the mouth with more calculus and plaque will have more aggressive bacteria. But um, the reason I've put this in is you can even have these bacteria in a very clean mouth. And the next case study I'll show you is just that. This is a patient that came to me again, funny enough, the 3 6 was in a problem area, and um, we found all the oral bacteria that were affecting her. So there you can see that was the patient. Those you got your PG, your TF. They all crossing this threshold here, and they affecting the mouth and the body as well, without us even knowing that's getting in the body. And then the clean mouth has an AA and a Tannerella fascipia. So this patient was an interleukin A, so I knew, good, I can work with her. She'll heal very quickly. Those were her bacteria. Um, and we started with the 3-6. So here again, I used the syringe with cloexidine with blunt tip, showing her how to inject, using a thicker interdental brush, changing the brushing technique, and we slowly started getting healing. And at the end, we tested, and these bacteria were all low, and then these ones came up higher. So that was a good sign. And we, she's still my patient to this day. <clears throat> now we're going to move on to, because the mouth is part of the digestive tract, I'm fascinated with gut health. I'm a person that enjoys water fasting. I'll do water fasting for like 10 days to just test myself. And um, sometimes I do a lot of juice fasting as well. And I feel much, much better. Um, my patients will tell me their brain fog starts to lift. Um, they just have an overall well-being, healthy, more energy um, when you clean the colon out. So just a bit of anatomy. Yeah, you see the liver, which obviously is the most important part. Once the liver functions properly, the body functions properly. It's the dustbin of the body we know. And um, when you do fasting, it really cleans the liver. It gives the digestive tract a break so that it can clean itself out and reset itself. And um, I'm pointing you here to the Ellesekiel valve, yeah, where you'll later see where the parasites live as well. So bearing in mind because we work in a multidisciplinary team, um, I work with a gastroenterologist um, and we put the camera in and it's fascinating to actually see what we can find. So this is the video. It's got no sound. I'll stop it and speak as I go. This is a healthy colon. You can see it's coral pink, it's light pink. It's amazing how it relates to the gums of the teeth. You can see the blood vessels there. They're supposed to absorb, when it's clean up, they absorb our food. But because of what we are eating, um, so much genetically modified food, our refined carbohydrates, our sugars, we know the nutrition. It's making us physically sick as well. So there you can see the inside. And this is what we want to aim for after a water fast or just intermittent fasting, it starts to heal. This is somebody, a 35-year-old lady that's got chronic fatigue. They feel very tired in the afternoon. Like mouth plug, you can get gut plug. And you can actually see that the pink area yeah, is almost swollen. You can't even see the blood vessels because it's inflamed. And... Um, that's called mucoid plaque. The parasites normally live, like I said, in the Ellesekiel valve. They're the first little ones that as the food drops, they get that 
good nourishment from the food. Um, this is, I believe, why ivermectin worked so well during COVID was because it was getting rid of these that were affecting people as well. And then there's the tapeworms. We recently saw a patient now which we removed a bunch of tapeworms. The candidiasis, which I'm going to go into, you can see how it goes. You can actually see, yeah, how red this area is of swelling. And then leads to polyps. That's your inflammatory response. Like your gums swell, your gut can swell. And you can see the parasites in between there as well. And then eventually chronic constipation with the patient. Somebody that's not going regularly, they don't have much fiber or they just go maybe. I've had a patient that goes only once a week. Now you can see it's almost black with the mucoid plaque. So when I talk about colon cleansing, it just depends on what you want to do. I prefer water fasting. Um, you can also use what we call psyllium husk. So now this is a topography of funguses as well. I'm going to show you the candida albicans, how they clump together, and I'm going to show you physically what it looks like on a child, one of my patients. Um, and then on one of my elder patients, these are the hypha. They look like long worms. You can see them on the toenail. And then the last one, the dublinesis. People that have dandruff normally test positive for candida dublinesis. So this child tends to take a pen and rubs it there. And because the body's inflamed, it comes out in between the fingers. Normally they treat this with cortisone, but it's the root cause is a fungus. There you can actually see the hypha running across there. And interesting, with the retirement homes that I go to with the patients, I'll always look um, at their feet. And sometimes you can see that yellowy part on their toenails on maybe one side of their body, like on the left or the right. Then I know that the fungus is predominantly growing on that particular side. In this case, it was on patient's right. And then this is another child that had that hypha growing up here on the forehead. Um, 